Continuing the list of Disney's unnecessary remakes is a live-action retelling of Pinocchio, which is one of the four freaking Pinocchio movies to come out this year. So far, this is their oldest animated movie that they've remade, until the live-action Snow White comes out, of course. The animated one still holds up pretty well with its charming characters and beautiful animation. It's also still traumatizing as hell. Since it's such a classic, it's no surprise that Disney would make an attempt to recreate it in a different take. With this one, they brought in Robert Zemeckis, who was the definition of a hit-or-miss director, and he has had quite a few misses. But when he has a hit, it really is a hit. He just hasn't had one in years. I mean, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, the Back to the Future trilogy, this guy used to make some masterpieces. I theorized Disney watched Polar Express and approached the mechas telling him, Hey, remember that puppet scene? Well, we have a project for you. A Christmas Carol. Oh, and maybe Pinocchio somewhere down the line. I wasn't expecting Pinocchio to be a masterpiece by any means, but I was still hoping it could be endearing in its own way. So what did I think of it? That's probably an overreaction, but I'm not kidding when I say this is one of the worst remakes Disney has put out, with Lion King still being worse. I don't think they can get lower than that. So now that the D23 Expo is over, I can get this review out of the way so I can get started on a ranking I have in the works. I'm not going to reveal what it is yet. I'm not even going to leave any hints about- <laughs> What the- <laughs> What was that? Eh, whatever. Anywho, let's talk about Pinocchio. Boy, let me tell you, it's a good thing I've given up being angry because some of the scenes in this movie would have had me yelling at my screen. This is probably the worst type of remake that can be created. This doesn't mean it's the worst remake, I already established that, but the decisions made in the 2022 Pinocchio movie are just so baffling. It incorporates many references to the original animated film while also including new additions that either add nothing or hurt the story. It tried finding a middle ground, but failed horribly at executing it in a way that feels natural. Like, they didn't have any idea on what they wanted this movie to be, but because I like to look for the good in these projects, I think it would be best if I stated the things I like about this movie. Um, it didn't release in theaters? Yeah, that's about it. I tried to find something enjoyable in this, but there's just really nothing. It's just hard to watch from beginning to end. To get this out of the way, the CGI is awful. I was never convinced that these things were actually there because they clash with the real environments so much, and in other cases, the environments are so horribly CGI'd that they clash with the real actors. I'm of course referring to Pleasure Island. It actually looks like something out of Spy Kids. That's how bad it is. You can tell that there's a bunch of green screen used. The keying looked very amateurish. I can't even laugh at how poor it looks, it's just sad. The character designs are also not very appealing. In a cartoon setting, it's cute, but in live action, it's pretty awkward. If I saw a cartoonish puppet walking around on its own, I'd be freaking out. Same goes for a creepy fox. Speaking of which, I hate Honest John in this. He doesn't say anything funny. His humor involves modern references, and it's weird because he's the only character who does this, and he's only in the movie for like five minutes. So this just comes right out of nowhere. Slab Oakley. Chad Log? <gasps> I've got it. Chris Pine. I didn't know Keegan-Michael Key was going to be in this movie, but I immediately knew it was him as soon as he started talking. I've gotten so tired of seeing and hearing him everywhere. He is the worst half of Key and Peele. Now, this is usually the part of the story where Pinocchio skips school to join these guys so he can become an actor, which portrays him as naive. But not this time! He goes to school, gets kicked out for not being a real boy, then he becomes an actor because he feels like he has to. This is actually an understandable motivation, which completely misses the point. Pinocchio is supposed to learn between right or wrong, but he's shown to be more hesitant about taking part in certain activities, such as participating in the irresponsible behavior of the Pleasure Island kids. This makes him not have to learn a lesson, and that just ruins the character. They decided to change this part of the story to throw in an anti-prejudice message. A lot of movies these days try to throw in these types of messages to the point where it no longer means anything. It's gotten very forced. There's also a new human character, and she does absolutely nothing valuable. I get that they wanted her to tie into this movie's message about how imperfections don't make you any less human, but they forgot to make her an actual character in the process. They begin a story arc for her, she disappears for a good chunk of the movie, and her arc just randomly ends. She could have been written out of the movie and nothing would have changed, but we still have scenes like Pinocchio finding out his nose can grow when he lies. This was a big deal in the original since it's part of the lesson he has to learn about the difference between right and wrong, but in this, it just acts as a throwaway scene because, well, 
they needed it in the movie. Blue Fairy doesn't come in to help, she only appears in one scene and is almost completely useless. Oh, there's also new songs included, they're all awful. They're clearly only there for filler, they're hard to listen to. The original songs are still there too, but they aren't as fun or endearing. When You Wish Upon a Star is lazily thrown in there, they also have to keep constantly referencing it in different scenes with either a character singing it or the instrumental being played in the soundtrack. I usually like Alan Silvestri's work, but his score in this was utterly forgettable. It's a shame because he made such an iconic score in Avengers Endgame three years prior. For some reason, they decided to make this a little more lighthearted than the original. This is very noticeable in the Pleasure Island scene. The kids don't smoke, they drink root beer instead of beer, and Labwick's donkey transformation is more… funny than traumatizing. This was the one moment in the movie that made me laugh, and it was during what was supposed to be the darkest part. This is Mufasa's death all over again. The animation managed to pull off the dark tone very well. You'd think a realistic depiction of it would be terrifying, but they failed at doing that. Even the climax with Monstro wasn't scary, though in this case, they definitely tried by giving him unnecessary tentacles, as if a giant whale isn't already scary enough. Plus, it happens during the day. I know it seems like I'm nitpicking, but them making it not happen in the dark just gets rid of the tension. Remember when I said the movie makes nostalgic references to the original that feel like they were only there to remind people of the original? Well, there are two scenes where they show Geppetto's cuckoo clocks, which are a bunch of references to Disney movies. I would have been okay if they had limited it to just Roger Rabbit since Robert Zemeckis directed it, and even Woody since Tom Hanks is in the movie. But there's also Donald Duck, Snow White, Sleeping Beauty, Dumbo, and it's just too much. There's no subtlety. Easter eggs are supposed to be subtle. I can't even say the performances are good. I don't know if it's because of the actors not trying or just bad directing, but every performance in this feels phoned in. Tom Hanks is so bland in this. He usually tries his hardest no matter the material, but this is definitely one of his weakest performances. It's actually good casting, but they couldn't make it work. The entire movie is so bland. Frustrating too. I don't know why Disney keeps insisting on taking the life out of their classics. I'm not against the idea of live action remakes. They can work with a good vision. Jungle Book is still the best of these because it felt like something different without being detrimental to the story. There's still a lot of remakes that have yet to come out, but I don't have much hope for them since they haven't given me a reason to. Why can't they make a remake that has a purpose outside of reminding people of what they grew up with? Come on Disney, you have to think! You gots to use your new I have great respect for Bob Chapek, which I've developed over the summer after doing a bit of thinking, and I know it's Iger who started this remake trend and Chapek is just continuing it, but I think he should look deeper and realize that maybe these films aren't very great. There are toxic Disney fans out there who want him fired, but I would like to see him stick around since he has potential, he hasn't done anything drastically wrong, he hasn't harmed any of his workers, he hasn't led the company into bankruptcy, but he does tend to make questionable decisions. Still, that shouldn't take away from the good decisions decisions he's made. He hasn't done anything at the level of Warner Bros. with them canceling and delaying projects because of money. And who do we have to blame for this? This guy, right? I'm not doing that again. Learn my lesson. Pinocchio sucks. It's not even surprising anymore. It's just another uninspired retelling of a classic story that struggles to have a purpose. I didn't even mention the ending, but trust me, it's very dumb. On the bright side, there is still Guillermo del Toro's version coming out on Netflix in December. I'm actually looking forward to that because, well, it's Guillermo del Toro. It's a motif of great importance in Nightmare Alley. It's a motif of great importance is the theme, or one of the themes of Shape of Water, which is how we look the gaze of, of each other. And I, we, we had a company for a while that was called Mirada, mm -hmm. you know? And, uh, and I think uh, the idea for me is only those that know how to look will find magic in this world because there is none if you don't know where to look. I'm sure that one will be a lot better. Just wait for that and steer clear of this one. If I could wish upon a star, I would wish for this movie to fade from existence.